Hello everyone. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about few important Azure services and the basic architecture that you should be aware as an Azure administrator. So I'm going to take a simple example as a you know application or website that is hosted in the cloud, which is vbhitsolutions.com. And as an Azure administrator, you need to know where this application or a website is hosted <clears throat> and how this website or the infrastructure where this website is hosted is secured and how it is highly available, how your organization is going to, uh, you know, compile with the uh, business continuity and disaster recovery solutions, how they are <clears throat> uh, having the monitoring this, you know, entire infrastructure and uh, how they are monitoring their network components. Um, so those things you should be aware. So let's talk about this. And uh, in, in this example, I have uh, two regions. One is uh, called as a primary region. The other one called as a secondary region. So we will also call this as a DR region. So the primary region uh, is located in the East US uh, location in Azure and secondary location is hosted in a central US location within Azure. So the primary region and secondary region uh, look similar in terms of the configuration uh, in this diagram. And uh, what, what infrastructure components we have in this diagram is uh, we have virtual machines. They are placed in a two different subnets. Uh, we have uh, two different uh, type of uh, virtual machines here <clears throat> we have. Um, so the first subnet, what you see is a web subnet and the other one we call it as a DB subnet in this example. So the web subnet hosts the web application or website and uh, DB, server, DB subnet contains the DB uh, database servers, um, which it could be in a you know, SQL database, or it will be Oracle database. They are a different subnet and uh, they both are part of the same virtual network, which is the prod VNet. So, each subnet have a different energies associated. The web server, <clears throat> web subnet has a web energy, which energy is nothing but network security groups. And DB subnet have a, a separate network security group, which is a DB energy. So the reason why we have a separate uh, energies are, um, you know, it is always recommended to uh, associate energies in a subnet level, instead of going through uh, each virtual machine NIC. Right, so we can have separate tools configured for the web NSC and DB NSC because uh, web servers need to talk to the internet because they are the front face for the any application and database servers no need to talk to the internet. They should only talk to the web servers or application servers. So we can have more customized rules uh, configured in uh, NSGs. So that is why we have separate NSGs for the, you know, uh, web servers and DB servers. That is the reason we, we also separated them in a different subnet here. Okay. So <clears throat> the web servers are load balanced. Uh, any traffic coming from the internet will be load balanced uh, using the Azure load balancer. We have internet facing load balancer. Here we have internal load balancer as well. So any web traffic uh, <clears throat> will be distributed to one of the uh, available web server. And if any web server want to make any communication, the request goes to the internal load balancer from there it goes to the backend database servers. Okay. And uh, one of the important thing that we need to know here is the, you know, VM's high, uh, high availability. Since we are running this VMs in a Microsoft data center, there are chances that Microsoft data center might have problem or their physical server might be rebooted. Uh, or there could be some network glitch or there could be issue with the storage. So if any one of this platform, be it a compute, storage, or network, if any one of the platform at Microsoft end have any problem, so your VM might not be available. It could be, you know, where your VM might be rebooted. Maybe your VM was not available for a certain, certain amount of time, right? So to provide high availability uh, in, in such scenarios, <clears throat> Microsoft recommend to keep your you know, two or more VMs, which has same application running in availability set or availability zone, okay? So that at least one VM is highly available during any unexpected downtime at Microsoft and our platform 
you know maintenance at microsoft end we will have a detailed discussion about this availability set availability zone in upcoming videos right so for now you need to know you are going to use availability set or availability zone to provide high availability for your vms okay so in, in this region, uh, you have an internet facing load balancer and internal load balancer, you have a availability set or availability zone, you have a network security groups and they all are placed in one of the VNet, all right? And uh, so the traffic is coming from, you know, traffic manager and distributing to the load balancer. So before we go there, let's talk about a few other important components so far, we talked about, uh, you know, your VM high availability and uh, how the traffic is distributed using load balancer and how inbound outbound communications are controlled through network security groups um, is what we spoke about it. And, you know, we need to also talk about business continuity solutions. So business continuity solutions are nothing but how you can configure backup for your virtual machines. There are, you know, tools that are available in the market, Commvault, or, you know, there could be other third-party tools which can be used for backup. But Microsoft introduced the Azure Recovery Service Vault. We are going to use uh, as a RSV. So using <clears throat> Azure RSV, you can backup on-premises and Azure workloads. And when it comes to the Azure workloads, uh, you can backup the virtual machines and, uh, you know, databases and file share and SAP based workloads. So using RSV or recovery service vault, you can configure a schedule, you can specify the retention. In case if your original server have any problem, uh, you can restore from the backup. We'll have a separate topic in detail, talking about how backup can be configured, how, what happens when you add a backup, we'll have a separate topic. And but, but you need to understand, you need to know there is a service called Azure Backup, which can fulfill our business requirement, especially in the area of business continuity solutions. Now, another important topic that you need to know is, uh, you know, the disaster recovery solutions. So with the availability site or availability zone, you are configuring high availability within the same uh, region. So what if this entire region is down? Right, so that's where disaster recovery solutions have, will come into the picture. So in case if something happened to the primary region, you need to have a solution which can, you know, be, uh, you know, which can create a similar set of environment in that another location to avoid any downtime for your end users. So we'll be using a ASR uh, in Azure, uh, which is used for your disaster recovery solution. What happens is, uh, you know, with the help of ASR, you are going to replicate the data of your web servers and database servers to the target location or a DR location. In, in this example, that's nothing but your, you know, central US location. So in this diagram, right now we are seeing the servers, VNet and load balancers, everything. But when, when in, the, in the production or enterprise environment, you don't need to keep this environment live all the time and you don't need to create any servers because Azure Site Recovery has capabilities to, you know, replicate the data from primary to secondary uh, region. And once the data is replicated, when you think that there is a DR has to be happened in the primary, that's where you are going to use ASR to perform the failover, when you do a failover, similar kind of infrastructure will be hosted in the target location or a DR location within a fraction of minutes. So hardly it may take you know 15 to 20 minutes to spin up the, your environment in the target location. So this is also to you know save the cost for the customers. Microsoft introduced this feature. You do need to spin up the environment well in advance to provide high availability. So the data will be replicated. You only pay for the replicated data. You don't need to pay for the compute. The moment you do failover, the infrastructure will be hosted in the secondary location. And that is where you are going to pay for the you know, VM running. And, and one more one important thing that you we need to be aware, when you have your you know <clears throat> VMs running in a secondary location, the primary has to be in a power of status. Because anyways, it is down. That is when you choose the DR solution. Right. So this is how you save the cost and you also ensure that you have very minimal downtime for your you know, business critical 
workloads all right so so um, when you when you have your servers and the infrastructure hosted in the dr location during the dr time disaster recovery time you will have to have the similar setup you know in the dr location right you can set up this vnet and load balancer nsg is well in advance so that asr can use them to you know associate your vms in those locate those uh, uh, vnet and uh, you know subnets now let's say that your traffic you know earlier the traffic is coming from the user user is uh, you know routed to the load balancer with the help of traffic manager to the primary region so now the traffic has to go to the second region because you did a dr right the infrastructure is hosted in the secondary location now so with the help of traffic manager uh, we are going to uh, you know route the traffic to the uh, secondary location and here there's no manual intervention needed because azure traffic manager is a global service and uh, it does the DNS, um, it, it does provide the DNS uh, queries. Uh, it works at DNS level. Um, so basically when when it, 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 it did not res get any response from the primary region, it thinks that, okay, this region is down or it, the nodes are unhealthy, then it, it routes the traffic to the secondary node, which is the uh, internet facing load balancer in the secondary location in this case, right? The traffic will be routed to the secondary because the primary is offline or degraded, right? So traffic manager has a different profiles. One of them is priority. When you have a critical infrastructure uh, like this, in this example, you can go for the priority because if primary is not available, automatically the traffic will be routed to the secondary. Right, so primary won't be available because uh, you did it. You know, it was a it has a downtime situation, and you did DR. And when you do a DR or disaster recovery or a failover, the infrastructure is hosted in the secondary location. And when traffic managers try to send the traffic to the secondary location, you have the same web servers and the same database servers available because ASR does the continuous replication. So you will have the latest data available in the target location and uh, when azure traffic manages route the traffic your web servers will be responded db server will be responded and your users will get a response from the website so this is how we provide dr solutions and uh, you know these are the few components that you should be aware at the same time you know whether you you are in a uh, you know primary location or secondary location the most important thing that you need to know is centralized monitoring solution right so you might be using Zabbix, uh, you might have seen Zabbix, Splunk, or any other monitoring tools, but Microsoft introduced something called Azure Log Analytics Workspace, which is one of the native service introduced by Microsoft. What it does is it collects the logs and store it in its database. Then you can write a query to fetch the required data, right? So you can create some automated email alerts. You can also uh, create a Ticket with your sales for uh, your ticketing tools. It could be service now, it could be BMC, it could be you know uh, your Salesforce, any ticketing tool. And it also have other capabilities like um, you know automated solutions. Let's say if one of your server is going around 99% utilization, you want to notify your users and reboot the server. You can also do that using the uh, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Function Apps, or you can use the Azure Runbook. So we will also have a detailed uh, discussion about this log analytics workspace in upcoming videos. All right. So these are the, some of the you know resources that you should be aware, of, services you should be aware. Or you know, it's like a sample or a simple architecture which can in be you know easily understandable by you know uh, beginners of Azure, right? Um, it may not have detailed information at the moment, but it, does, it might have. It might give you some information, you know, some valuable information about how uh, you know how your setup looks like, right? Well, we'll try to expand the scope of this, and in an upcoming videos, we'll try to add firewalls and you know route tables, and we'll we'll go deeper into it. All right. Uh, until then, uh, thank you so much for your time, and uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, see you in the next video.